Um, let's get started. We're going to start in the room with questions. Again, before you ask your question, if you can say your name and affiliation, that would be super helpful. Who wants to start? Wayne Price, go ahead. Dwayne Price, math.com. How you doing, Nick? Good. Dwayne, how's everything? All right. I know you've done this before when you spoke to Milwaukee. What you meant. How much different is it coming back to coach a team that you played for on the top? Good question. Uh, <laughs> uh, yes, I did coach in Brooklyn uh, and Milwaukee. Uh, but there's nothing like coming back to uh, an organization that you were drafted by. Uh, a lot of great memories. Uh, rookie of the year. Uh, winning a championship uh, and so I, i'm just honored to have this opportunity to be able to uh, put this you know the Mavs logo back on and uh, to be able to chase that that championship and so uh, i'm excited i'm kind of like a, a kid in a candy store i i got a great group of young men to coach and help develop so I'm very honored and uh, excited to, to have this opportunity. Is it much easier to find your way around the building since you can be with it? Yeah, I, I, the building is not the problem. Uh, there's a lot more people here. Uh, <laughs> there's a little bit more traffic uh, than, I, than I can remember, but um, I'm excited to be back in the city. Uh, and so the building, uh, we used to practice here in the arena. Uh, now we have this practice thing called the practice site. Uh, so it, it's, but it's all good. It's all good. Yeah, I'm Callie Kaplan with the Dallas Morning News. Uh, I know it's a hot topic around the league right now, but do you know the vaccination status of the team and basketball staff? It's very high. Do you have like a specific number? <laughs> what does uh, I mean? I can get that to you, but I haven't been told, but I would say it's in the 90 percentile, um, so it's, it's very high. Do you expect that it might get higher, um, like before the regular season? That is our goal, is to, to be 100 percent. Cool. Uh, Mark Powell. Hey, you, kid. Mark Powell, Mass TV. Nice to see you. Thank you. Um, you have your system, obviously, and you have the work that you want to do coming at the training camp to establish that and implement that. But you also are dealing with yet another short off season, so there are challenges there. Could you share with us, with, with those two competing things, how you anticipate how intense your work is going to be during training camp and how intense the level of competition is going to be in a handful of preseason games you get to play? Yeah, it's, um, I don't know the exact number, but I, it feels like it's a lot shorter than last year. And last year, uh, being somewhere else, it was, I think, 63 days from when we finished to when we started. And so um, the nice thing about our team is that we have a group that's been together. So continuity is key. Uh, you have a new staff. Um, the language might be a little different, uh, but it, it's still basketball. Um, we have a, a young team, and a young, talented team. And so uh, we're not going to go two a days. Uh, we'll go one uh, a day uh, here. We'll go two, two here, the first two, and then um, have a day off uh, to see where we stand. And, uh, but it's it's not where we're going to get everything in in training camp. This is going to be a journey or a process that we're going to put things in as we go. Uh, and we know that it's easy to get the ball to Luca, um, but the one thing we do want to get you know accomplished is other guys as playmakers so that. You know, come the fourth quarter, Luca is fresh and, and ready to deliver. And so that'll be something that we'll work on throughout training camp. All right, from McMahon. McMahon is Dan. Jason, what do you envision being different for KP in terms of how he's used offensively? Well, I think the simple way to put it is just I, I want him, KP to be a basketball player. Uh, there's no limitations on just shooting threes. Uh, being able to to roll, to be able to shoot the mid range, to be able to put the ball on the floor, um, I, I want him to be uh, who he is, and that's a basketball player, and not just be limited to shooting threes or crashing from the corner. I want him to, to feel comfortable on the floor uh, in any spot that you know. I think he's a weapon that he shoots the ball too well not to be able to shoot mid range shots. 
And do you see him as being solely a five? Do you see pairing him with, with another base, whether it's Dwighter or, or Maxi? What do you think from there? Tim, I, I think uh, I've always looked at everyone as a basketball player. Uh, as we go along this journey, I, I don't look at guys as fours or fives. Uh, you put your best out there and you kind of use them in different situations. But uh, I think when you look at KP, he can play both four and five. Uh, there'll be times when he's out there as the, as the five. Uh, but I think starting off the season, he'll, he'll probably start off at the four. All right, Dorothy Gentry. Dorothy Gentry with My Messenger Media. Coach, what was most important to you when you were assembling your coaching staff? In particular, why was Christy Tolliver a match that you felt the match we had? Dorothy, that's a great question. First of you know, I, I think when you look at our staff, uh, there's a lot of first timers. Uh, uh, we can call them rookies. But I, I wanted, you know, uh, a staff uh, that I, I didn't really know everyone. You know, I, fresh ideas, uh, different point of view. Um, when you look at what Christy uh, being a player, still playing, is incredible. Um, because she can give a view uh, as a player today. Um, also, she's coached with the Wizards, so she has experience. Um, but she came highly recommended throughout the league um, when you talk about um, the players in Washington. Spoke very highly of her. And so, um, and then I, once we committed to her, I got to watch her. Unfortunately, she got hurt. Um, but. Uh, just talking to her, I, I felt she would, you know, bring a lot of value to our staff. Uh, Jared Dudley, a former player, 14-year career, uh, didn't touch the top of the backboard, uh, didn't run a four, four, five flat. You know, it wasn't about speed, but basketball IQ. Uh, again, I think he is underrated um, with the basketball IQ. And so I, I, and I got to see him up close the last two years in LA of how he handled uh, AD and LeBron, uh, dealing with stars and how the stars responded to him and respected him. And, uh, and I, I kind of put that away uh, in my notes. Uh, if I ever got a chance, I, I would ask him to be a part of the staff if he was ready to. Um, when you talk about Igor, over 20 years of, of basketball experience as a coach, uh, I look at Igor as a basketball genius offensively. Uh, if you ask for one play, he can give you 10, um, and, and which I think is incredible. Um, and so to have that type of asset um, on our staff, again, um, in, internationally, um, has been exposed to a lot of international basketball. Um, also, uh, maybe didn't go as well uh, in Phoenix. So we all have some things in common that we want to prove. And I think when you can put that type of nucleus together, uh, something special can happen. And so um, you look at St. Jean, uh, I was with the last two years in LA, uh, comes from being the coaching DNA uh, in his family. Very bright young man uh, was at St. John's before that uh, with Chris Mullen and Mitch Richmond. And so he has uh, a different angle in the sense of college and then also being in the pros. And Sean Sweeney, who uh, I did know, uh, was with me in Brooklyn and uh, also Milwaukee and uh, understands the defensive side of the ball, and not just the defensive side of the ball, but he gets labeled that because of what we did in Milwaukee, uh, but he understands both sides of the ball and he, he's as good as they come. Did I skip? Did I miss anybody? If I did, I got to go deal with them after this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, DA and uh, yes, D, I'm sorry. I'm not, I was not going to forget anybody. We're not moving on. Uh, DA, uh, Daryl Armstrong, high energy, love D, uh, comes. Uh, part of the staff that was here. Um, and so former player, uh, love his energy, uh, love what he stands for. And so happy to have him. And then uh, Sham God, 
Lindsey Ham was here with the past staff. Again, uh, love what he does for our staff, uh, player development, and uh, those two are uh, very important to our staff and have done a great job being here. Right, go ahead. Thank you, Jason. I've got town and basketball. Just a quick clarification on the 9% uh, gasoline. Is that for players or everybody? Because as you know, you know, some states are going to be requiring these guys to be. Uh, yeah, I, I'm gonna say 90 uh, percent uh, for both. For both. I, I think uh, for coaching uh, is is 100 mm -hmm. percent, uh, and so uh, we're working to get to 100 percent with players. Okay, and then also, is everybody healthy in terms of training camp? Is everybody gonna be able to practice the first day? Uh, Jaquan, uh, there's there might be one player that. Uh, no, everybody can go. Yes, everybody can go. Everybody will be happy. Okay. Hey, uh, Jason, uh, yes. What was the thinking uh, or the rationale behind signing Frank, and what do you suspect he'll bring? Uh, well, I think uh, signing Frank, uh, there's something called friendly competition uh, that. Uh, we, we felt, I think, to be healthy for training camp um, and then also to have the opportunity to, to look at Frank uh, and what he's done uh, in France. Also, uh, you know, what he didn't get the opportunity to do in New York. And so being a young player, we thought could come in and, and we could take a look at uh, to help us with that defensive side of the ball and also being able to be that point guard. Um, needed that and so uh, but the biggest thing is competition uh, is something that we, we want to try to generate here in the training camp. Uh, uh, Eleven years ago about now you were doing this media day thing that we won't end up being a championship season. How long ago does that seem and how much is that part of the conversation with guys about that journey and what it takes and those kinds of things? Uh, well, 11 years seems a long, long time ago, more like 21 years. Uh, it, it's, it hasn't really come up, you know, uh, because, you know, everyone's journey is different. Every team's journey is different. And, and so uh, for, for Dirk, for myself, uh, Tyson, guys that were here, um, they know what what it takes, um, you know, for the guys that we have on our team, uh, it can mean something totally different. And so for us, it's it's about work, about trust, you know, and, and communication. And uh, as we build and go along this journey, you know, hopefully we're we're here in June, having that same feeling. Hey, Jason Chuck with Team Mass Radio. Uh, what did you most learn about coaching? last two years as an assistant that will make you a better head coach? Cool, great question. Uh, I can't praise Frank Vogel enough. I mean, uh, he, he really taught me a lot about being a coach. It didn't have to be assistant coach, didn't have to be a head coach, but just being a coach. And uh, when you talk about communication, uh, you talk about ha you know, having fun, uh, with the players and also with your staff. Um, but also he showed me what it takes to be the best defense in the league. Uh, and so um, I'm very excited to, to have my opportunity to hopefully improve our defense here in Dallas, but also, you know, have that communication. Uh, and then also, you know, being able to compete, to be able to work and, uh, those are the things uh, that I've really learned from Frank, and, and Frank doesn't get enough just of how good of a coach he really is. What did you learn specifically about coaching defense from him that you didn't know before that then translates to here? Well, you gotta have some talent. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, it. You know, I, I think when you. There's different way, approaches, right? You can you can be hard and like demand and demand and demand, uh, or you can go about it differently. And you know, video, 
uh, being able to go through it, uh, you know, ask, you know, players to compete. Um, and, and then Frank, you know, watching Frank and the way he communicated and, uh, and talked to the players, uh, it, it wasn't hard. And you can see the response that the greatest players in the world, you know, respected that. And uh, that's something that I will borrow from him. Okay, we're gonna do a couple more in the room, Marco. Sure. Hey, Jason, uh, one more question about the training camp preparation. As you know, from being a player and coach, the normal September routine is guys come in, they start playing, scrimmaging, competing, bonding, preparing, all those sorts of things. Have you been able to do that this year or are there restrictions because of protocol? And such? No, uh, the nice thing about September is that we've had a lot of players in town uh, playing or working out. Uh, and so uh, to be able to watch the guys play um, was, was good. You know, uh, KP was here uh, early. Uh, so uh, Luca just got into town, but like, when he played, you could see the difference of the level or the energy in the, in the building. Um, and so it was fun. Uh, and so as a coach, I got to see uh, some of the things that I think we can do well. Um, and then I saw some things that we're gonna, we, we have to work on. And so um, it was good. But it was good to see a lot of people in town early. Cool. And we're going to have to zoom right now. All so right. everybody on the screen. Mac Angle, you can go ahead. Uh, Mac Engel, Fort Worth Star Telegram. Jason, a lot's been made out of the um, vaccination po protocols and policy between the NBA and the NBA players. You're caught, do you feel in any way caught in the middle of this, or are you cl clearly on one side, which is pro vaccine, get the medicine? Yeah, I think you could be caught in, in the middle uh, because, you know, the, you know, you can't, you know, be one way or the other. Everybody has their opinion of how things should be handled. Um, but you have to do what's best for you. Um, and everyone's different, as we know, in our country. And so, uh, but our league is, is and it's going to be different in different states. And so we're just going to have to make that adjustment as we go. Uh, and especially, uh, you know, going to Canada. Uh, so uh, we can only give the information, the, the right information to our players and to our staff, and then they have to make that decision. All right, Kevin Gray, go ahead. Hey, good afternoon, Jason. Good to see you. A um, couple questions for you. With respect to what you were talking about this summer with Christos Porzingis, you envision him getting more aggressive, being able to get back to some of the things that he was doing in New York. Are those things specifically that you're wanting to do with Christos Porzingis? And then secondly, when you look at yourself this summer, what's the thing that you've learned most in terms of your communication style that you want to bring to the Mavericks and this staff and this team this season? Yeah, you know, I think uh, watching KP uh, when he was in New York, uh, the unicorn was born. And uh, everybody was, you know, and especially me, because I was in Milwaukee, uh, we were scared of him because of the things that he could do. You know, he could put it on the floor. He can get to the rim. He could shoot it over every, anybody that was going to guard him. And unfortunately, he, he tore his ACL against the Bucs, uh, you know. And so he's always had to rehab. And uh, unfortunately, as a professional, you're always rehabbing, you never can grow or your game will never expand. And so he's just been hovering, I think here in the first summer, you know, now he's healthy. Uh, it wasn't that long ago, he was an all-star. And so uh, for me and for, for his teammates and our staff, we want him to be himself. There is no pressure. He, he just has to be a basketball player and, and, and rely on his strengths. Um, there is no bad shot. And so, uh, you know, I, I really believe that he's going to have a great year. All right, we have to get hey, Coach get moving here soon. So we're going to take one more question from Tadeja. Oh, hello, Coach. Tadeja Lamprey from Slovenian Television. 
Um, you got to know Luca a little bit, uh, and you were even in Slovenia this summer. What are your impressions of him, and where is his limit? Well, I, I look at Luca as a young Picasso, um, someone who is uh, who's who's very talented, uh, loves to win. Uh, and understands how to play the game at a very high level. Uh, as a coach, uh, I don't know if anybody told Picasso that he had to use all the paints, uh, but uh, I just want to remind Luca that you know he can he can rely on his teammates. That his teammates are going to be there to help him. And so uh, I'm very excited to have this opportunity to work with a young Picasso who who. His paintings have been incredible, you know, up to this point, and are only going to get better with time and age. All right, so it's good. Thank you very much Thank for your you. time. Thank Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, everybody. Uh, we will have 11 players coming along here shortly, not all at once. Um, they're, they're circling through different different media stations with merchandise and things like that. So as soon as we know who's walking in the door, we'll let you know. And um, if you guys have questions for whoever the next player is, feel free to raise your hand whenever. Thank you, guys.